Hello, this feels like an exit interview, like I'm self-taping my exit interview. Um, so welcome. This is uh, my leaving Paris video, though I'm going to be back in like three months. So I'm really being a lot more dramatic than I need to be. I'm going to be here for four years. I'm doing a bachelor's like it's not that deep. Anyway, um, it's been nine months I've lived here. Um, I haven't been back at all. Like I haven't been to Toronto where I'm from. Uh, I haven't seen my family, whatever. I haven't hugged my dog. Um, so yeah, what went wrong? What went right? What could I have done better? Let's go over it. Um, so I moved here in September, summertime. It was lovely. It was beautiful. I felt just like absolutely like I belong here. This is fantastic. Everyone said their bad experiences moving abroad, but not me because I'm special. Uh, yeah, not that special. That's yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the worst part about moving to a new place and knowing no one is something that someone said that kind of stuck with me, which is you take yourself with you. Um, I didn't really want to do that. I like part of the reason why I left Toronto, I didn't like the person I was and I was just like surrounded by all these memories of the past. Like when you grow up in a place and then you live there as an adult, it's just like, fuck, I get it. it's just like, I'm walking down the street, it's the same street that I did my stupid teenage stuff on and I just don't want to be here. I don't want to run into my old high school teachers anymore. I just, I want my own life. And I'd always wanted to come here. Um, and then I was working for like four or five years after high school. Um, Cause I was like, I don't need no degree. And then I was like, <laughs> I kind of want the degree. Like it'd be kind of nice. Um, so I decided to apply. It was kind of on a whim. It was like in the middle of Canadian winter and I was just like, I need to get out of here. Like I can't live here anymore. So I applied to Paris College of Art, which is a really small, like private university here. It's taught in English. So that's something that like, I speak French, but like not as good as I thought I did. And I was like, it's gonna be way too much to move to a new place, start studying again and study in a foreign language that like I'm, you know, not completely fluent in. So I chose this English university. Um, definitely different than I thought it would be. Um, I have no like strong opinion on this school, which I know like people might be looking at this like, you know, should I go here? Should I not? Um, it depends. Uh, but yeah, um, I got here and, you know, met everyone and I didn't really bother to ask them, you know, how old are you? Whatever. I was just like, people, this is so cool. Like I haven't been like socially just in that kind of situation before where I'm just meeting all these new people, like making friends as an adult is really, really hard. Um, so it was so nice. Just like all these new people, like we go out for drinks, we drink in the Tilly, it's beautiful, whatever. Um, so I'm like, these people are all my friends. This is fantastic. I have this like social life now. I'm going to start school. I live in Paris. Whoa. Um, so then, yeah, semester starts. I like school, you know, I, it's good. Um, I've been out of it for so long and my only like university experience was just like doing a couple months at another art university in Toronto. And I just was not in the place. Like I was 17. I'm just take a year off people. It's just, that's my advice. That's my first advice. <laughs> take a year off. Um, so I was just kind of like in this kind of state of like shock, but happy shock for like the first few months, like, yay, that's, that's all me. And then it kind of started to like occur to me just, you know, <laughs> a little bit, um, that I was so much older than everyone else. Uh, and I thought, you know, that's not a problem. Like, I can still be friends with people younger than me. But when you're like 23 years old, hanging around people who are going through like their first experience of ever living on their own, and like basically first parties, a lot of them are American. So like first time, like really being able to drink because the drinking age is 18 here, 21 in the States for some reason. Um, it's just too much. You just like, I know 23 isn't that old, but I just felt so old. I was like, I can't go out on a school night 
what the hell? I need my sleep. Like, I've been through enough. <laughs> so I just kind of quickly, like, fell out of that huge social group because I just, like, was not willing to go to a party every night. And that's kind of, like, what you need to do. And that's just, I love partying on the weekends, maybe the occasional weeknight, but, like, it was just, like, too much. Like, I can't go out to class at 9 a.m. after being out till 3 a.m. It's just, it's not in the cards at this big age. Um, so, yeah, that happened quickly, and then I kind of, like, started to get a little disillusioned with school as well, especially since, like, this school is, like, the first year is this, like, foundation year where everyone just comes in with, like, different aspirations and at different places, and basically, like, the idea is that you just learn a bunch of things and then decide what you want to specialize, which is actually why I chose it, because I'm, like, a fine arts person, I love sculpture too, and a big fashion costume design person, so I was like, I don't know what I want to specialize, like, I don't want to go straight into fashion school because I might hate it. Um, so I, you know, thought that would be fine, but then it was just like, I've been doing art for so long and already kind of have this established kind of like who I am as an artist. Like it's still, I still need school. Like I'm not saying I'm like ready, you know, to go out and sell my art, I, I'm not. But like, I just hoped that it would be at more of a level that I would learn a little more and like that, the critiques would be a little harsher too because they were like so soft um it just felt like yeah it's great to be told that you're talented and amazing but like there's a time when you need someone to actually tell you that your art sucks um and like competition is yeah i think it's a good school but if you already kind of know who you are which is funny because i felt at first that it was not a good school for that but like if you are self-disciplined enough to push yourself, but they recruit people for this foundation year where you're supposed to find yourself as an artist and it just, it's not a good fit for that. Um, it's a better fit for like, you just want to like further yourself and you want to make contacts and whatever. Um, so that's the school part. Uh, in terms of the actual living in Paris part, um, definitely, any kind of like Paris syndrome that I might have had died very fast, um, especially once the winter hit. It's depressing here. Like, it's just, it's not as cold as Canada, obviously. Like, it doesn't snow, but it's just like wet and cold for so long. And when you're used to living in North America, it's like, you don't realize how much everything is heated and how much effort that they make for you to be comfortable all the time. Like air conditioning and heat just in like regular buildings in the metro is like, it's just there and you just take it for granted when you're North American and then you come to a European city or a, a lot of different cities. Um, and it's just not like that. Like you just experience your cold and it's like deep bone cold. Um, so that's, that's hard for me. Um, I'm definitely not like a cold weather person. Uh, also, like, over Christmas, a bunch of my friends obviously went home, so it was, like, I was alone, and it was nice, like, I like exploring on my own, but also I was just like, ugh, this kind of sucks. Um, but it, it didn't, like, in the grand scheme of things, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, then coming second semester, you know, things turned up a bit, sort of switched my focus from like the big social group to like a couple close friends. Good decision. Um, but yeah, they really like something that just doesn't occur to you right, on the vein of like taking yourself with you. Um, it's just like how much that same crap that you had in all your previous friendships and all this stuff that you carry is just still there and you can make new friends and no one can know you, but you're still who you are. And I think that's a really important thing for everyone to experience because it's so easy to blame things just on your surroundings or on other people. But it's really, really humbling to just be like, oh, this is who I am. This is what I need to work on. I'm in this entirely new place and I'm still me. Um, it's, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, in other ways though, like I have changed, like my life has just changed so drastically, just the things that I do. Like, I mean, 
obviously there was COVID like before I came in Toronto and here too. <laughs> um, but like I came just at the time when restrictions were starting to lift and the only time they really like went back a little bit uh, was like around the variant thing. Yeah, that was like a major shock to the system and I didn't give myself enough time to just like adjust to that. I was just like, oh, this is how it is, let's go. Um, yeah, so that was interesting. Um, what else? I mean, like, there's, there's like a parade going outside my house. <laughs> That's another thing, living on the ground floor is interesting. And just like, I've lived on my own so many times. Like I've had three different apartments in Toronto. I've lived completely on my own. I've lived with roommates, but like, you can never like compare that to like living in an entirely new city because like, I could always go back to my parents' house for a dinner. Uh, like, I could always go, like, take a proper bath. <laughs> um, you know, like, it just, like, those small comforts are just gone. And, like, there's no kind of, like, respite and no comfort. And it's good. Like, it's really good for you. Like, it really will, like, just push the hell out of you. Um, yeah, and then just, like, Art-wise, I mean, it's Paris. You're surrounded with, like, the most beautiful art in the world. You can just go for free to any museum with your student card, which is incredible. Like, I've literally been on walks and been like, oh, I really have to pee, but I don't want to, like, go into a restaurant and, like, ask them to use the bathroom. Oh, the Louvre is right there. <laughs> Let's just go. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so that's, like, that's pretty uncomparable. Like, you really can't take that away, and it's, like, you can just go see things and there's like always new stuff. So that's, that's really amazing. And that's something I'm like really, really grateful for. Um, studying art in general. I mean, it's funny, like everyone said this and of course I'm me. So I had to go and like do my own thing and figure it out for myself. But everyone was like, go live there for like six months, go live there for a year before you decide to go to school and commit to four years. I was like, nah, <laughs> which I mean, it is a lot easier to get a visa you are a student, everything's actually a lot easier. Um, but like, I just wish I'd had more time to like explore the city and just live in the city and like get to know people outside of school before I'd gone to school. Um, because it's like, it's so easy to just fall into the routine of like, get up, go to school, you know, spend eight hours there, spend the evening there sometimes, and then like come back late at night and you just walk through the same neighborhood and it's like, I don't know, like, I've gone and up close to the Eiffel Tower once. Uh, like, it's just, like, you don't really, like, do those kinds of things. Not that the Eiffel Tower is really, like, anything special, but, like, just, like, those little things. Like, I only went to the Louvre for the first time over the winter break because I was just so busy at school and, like, the hours conflict, obviously, because also it's France and everything closes, like, super early. Yeah, I'm, like, I wish that I you know, explored a little more and like gotten to know the city a little more because I just fell into like the routine of school very easily. Like there's a lot of work and that's what you do. Like you just have to kind of lock yourself up and do art. And like, that's what I was focused on. I was also like so busy with school and like learning stuff and just getting through like this whole curve of like, I haven't written an essay in six years. Uh, Five years? I don't, like, I actually don't know. I don't think I wrote any essays in high school because I went to, like, kind of a fake high school. Um, it was great. I loved it. Um, but, yeah, like, just getting that back that, like, I just didn't have the time to, like, put my full effort into, like, learning French, making a bunch of French friends, like, just whatever. I, <laughs> the most, like practice that I got, which highly recommend, uh, go on Tinder dates. Uh, even if you don't want to date anyone, uh, just go on Tinder dates because most of the time they're not really going to call you back anyway. Um, because you sucked at speaking their language. You're not really hot enough to make up for that. Or maybe you are, if you are good for you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like, but it's, it's really good. Like, to practice if you just tell them like don't speak English and like I, I want to talk to you in French or whatever like they will like and 
it's it's really good it's really good experience um but kind of sounds like taking advantage of people but they're men so they're men <laughs> like i don't know what to say um yeah so i i wish i'd had more time to just like experience it um but you know i did some really cool things i worked at fashion week that was fun um i went to some really cool paris clubs which i never would have experienced got to see a lot of art um i got to go to the south of france at one point which was like so nice um yeah like and i mean i didn't get to travel a lot but other people did so i lived through them um if you have a little money which is you know <laughs> it's great uh good for I'm so I'm so happy for them. Um, you can just like go to Italy for like the weekend and whatever, and it's great. Um, it's a hard place to be poor, but you know so is everywhere. So uh, it's a hard place to be poor when you actually like can't get a job because you don't have time, and they'd rather hire someone who is French. Uh, that's just, I mean, I would too. Like, uh, there's enough people out there who like are French and speak good English. So like, they don't really need English speakers. The only job you can really get is like nannying, which I hate children. And like teaching English, which like, I don't, I don't speak good English. <laughs> like, uh, I'm excited to come back. I really don't want to go back to Toronto. Like, I really, really, really don't. Even though, like, sometimes I hate it here. Like, sometimes I just want to go home. Um, I now, like, especially this last, like, two weeks because I've been off school and I've been just able to walk around and, like, do whatever I want. It's so nice. And, like, Paris in the summer is just, like, everyone is hanging out by the sun. Like, the cafes are just packed. The terraces are packed. It's so nice. Um, and like, people are really friendly. Like everyone says that the French are rude. I actually don't understand. I think if the French are rude to you, you're really annoying. Like that's what I think. Because like, anytime I've been in a situation where like, I don't know the French words for it. Like when you're learning a language, you don't really think to learn like, how do I, I need to learn vocabulary for like, renting a storage unit like that's not really like something that crosses your mind on like duolingo um so like whenever i've been in a situation like that like people have just been like, so nice and understanding and they try to do their best to speak english even if they don't and if they don't they like apologize so bad like so much and like they feel bad and i'm like why do you feel bad i feel bad like let's have a let's have a competition over feeling bad like I'm in France, I've made this choice. Like, you didn't make the choice for me to walk in here and butcher your language. Um, yeah, and like, I just find, like, they're really friendly and inviting. And like, I've just had like so many nice experiences of like sitting in bars and stuff. And like, people just come up and talk to you. Like, people are just nice. And like, there's definitely like a thing about not dressing like too extra. like. They don't really like really over the top stuff, which is funny because like fashion is such a big like it's a fashion capital. The only time you really see people dressed up like fully like the way you see them like Emily in Paris or fucking like Sex in the City like is at Fashion Week, and so like they're usually not French. Um, but like other than that, like most people like they stick really neutral. Like makeup is minimal, and the hair like people aren't really like alternative. Teenagers are, but like not like people my age um so like that might be a shock for you if you're coming here um I know there's a lot of people who feel incredibly victimized by it um but you know the way you dress is your choice and um <laughs> if you're being oppressed for something you can take off at the end of the day like I don't know what to say <laughs>
just to see people walk up like, hi, uh, like, um, uh, I want to buy this bag. Also, like, where can we eat here? It's like, you're in Paris, look around, there's a terrace everywhere. You can eat literally anywhere. You can go to the laundry and get like, better bread than you've ever had in your little life. Like, just like, at least say bonjour. Just say bonjour. It's not that hard. Uh, like, try. And yeah, like that's the kind of thing that like I think that's, I mean, it's just like people being defensive and people being annoyed at like just so many people treating them like that. Yeah, that's all for today. I'm gonna go put some stuff in my storage locker because I'm leaving in like two days. And uh, somehow I accumulated like four boxes of stuff. I don't know how, I don't know. Anyway, that's it. That's it. That's all I have to say. Bye.